this is uh, lecture number 20 of course ME314 fluid mechanics 2 and uh, uh, this is the second lecture of this week. Uh, uh, today we are going to start a new topic turbo machine. Uh, earlier we have done uh, uh, potential flow theory and uh, 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 I want to use you students to do the uh, numericals related with uh, uh, potential flow theory. Uh, in uh, good numbers. So today we are going to start with the uh, classification of fluid machines in general. So there are two broad classifications. One is called positive displacement machines. Other is called uh, turbo machines or rotodynamic machines. So, uh, then we will go into the performance of uh, uh, the positive displacement pumps and rotodynamic pumps. Uh, and then we will go into the further classification of uh, turbo machines uh, with respect to the direction of the of flow uh, across the rotor. And then uh, in the end, we will go into some the scope of that turbo machine, uh, why this uh, turbo machine is important. Okay, let's start with the fluid machines. Uh, so you have a broad classification of fluid machines is two broad categories. One is called PDMs. PDMs stands for positive displacement machines, which are uh, static in action. Whereas uh, the, another class of turbo machines, which is called turbo machines, which are rotodynamics. And uh, uh, this positive displacement machines could be of reciprocating type or could be of rotary type. Similarly. Uh, turbo machines could be uh, work as a pump or these turbo machines could be worked as turbines. So, so the, uh, the main classification for the machines goes with the uh, energy interaction, how the energy interaction takes place between a, a continuous stream of fluid uh, to a mechanical element. Uh, that mechanical element is actually rotating about a fixed axis. So, how the uh, energy interaction takes place to that rotating element with the moving stream uh, that actually defines uh, different types of turbo machines. So, uh, for example, when energy is added to the fluid, uh, we call it a broad category pump. So, it is not a specific device, but it is a broad category when you have a moving stream, so uh, you have available energy in the fluid. Uh, that goes through the device and that device uh, is having a rotating element and uh, uh, some energy interaction takes place. So when uh, energy is added to the fluid, so uh, that uh, device is called as a pump. So uh, what you are doing is uh, uh, you have a flow stream, a flow of a stream, and uh, the pump is transferring energy. So you are uh, you are doing the shaft work, and that shaft work is transferred to the fluid, so that the fluid uh, uh, gains energy. So that device is called uh, pump, and obviously is uh, energy consuming device. Uh, on contrary, we have uh, a device if you have a moving stream having available energy. And what we get is we get work output from by extracting energy from the fluid. Then such devices are called as turbines. So uh, in general, uh, uh, mechanical systems uh, we have two types of devices. One is which is consuming energy. We broadly classify as pumps. Uh, it could be not necessarily a pump as you see uh, in your homes, but it could be a fan because. Uh, a uh, fan is also doing the same thing, compressor is also doing the same thing. So energy is added to the fluid so that uh, the fluid gains more energy or it has some higher pressure. Uh, whereas if you extract energy from the fluid that would be uh, the such devices are called as uh, uh, turbines. So, so this is a broad classification what, whether your fluid machines could be uh, turbines or pumps. Okay, what is a positive displacement machine? So, positive displacement machines actually forces a fluid into or out of a chamber by changing the volume of the chamber. So, let's say for example in this gear pump fluid at the suction side goes in. So, there is a space between the casing and the uh, gears. 
so and what happens is this gears are run by means of a motor so the energy is uh, from the shaft work is transmitted to the fluid so that the fluid gains energy and uh, so the, the amount of work that has been done to the fluid is responsible for increasing the pressure so high pressure fluid goes out uh, from the discharge of that gear pump so uh, such devices which uh, work in such a manner that it forces a fluid in and out of a chamber by changing the volume of the chamber so uh, the pressure developed and the work done is uh, due to the result of those static forces uh, so such machines are called positive displacement machine there are so many examples like uh, your uh, gear pump your uh, um, uh, ic engines your bicycle pump so they are all called as uh, uh, positive displacement machines for example this like a sliding vane type pump so it has some rotor and having sliding vanes uh, so they are spring operated vanes so what happens is they these uh, this shaft is being rotated by means of a motor so when fluid enters uh, there is a space developed that is actually the uh, volume of the chamber so what it does is uh, this uh, by changing the volume because of this uh, eccentric uh, shaft the energy is transmitted from the uh, shaft to the fluid so that fluid gains energy and its pressure increases so this is how your even your uh, bicycle pump works because you have air and you compresses air so that increase that uh, by means of that piston and cylinder uh, the energy is uh, tra transmitted to the fluid so fluid exit uh, at a higher pressure and the same thing is with the human heart which uh, uh, pump the fluid so that fluid uh, the blood can go to the all parts of the body so that is also a positive displacement pump because uh, 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 when it uh, uh, sucks uh, uh, the blood uh, then uh, there is a volume of the chamber and uh, due to the motion of the muscles of the heart the energy is uh, transmitted to the fluid and then fluid moves throughout the body so this is uh, an example of a positive displacement machine uh, or it could be a reciprocating type plunger where uh, you have a, a plunger that has this vertical motion so uh, what happens is uh, this section valve is initially it is closed so once you uh, push it up then fluid comes in and then you push it down so that uh, the uh, energy is transmitted to the fluid and then higher pressure this discharge valve uh, uh, opens and the fluid leaves at a higher pressure so such machines uh, work in the same manner as uh, there is an energy interaction uh, by intermittently by the static forces from the shaft or from the rotor to the fluid in such a manner that fluid enters and once you push the plunger its volume changes and in this way energy interaction takes place and higher energy fluid goes out from the discharge. Uh, uh, there is uh, another uh, type of fluid machine we call a turbo machine. So turbo machines involves uh, uh, collection of blades and flow channels are around an axis of rotation and that forms a rotor. So a rotor produces this dyna uh, dynamic effect, photodynamic effect and uh, in this way energy is uh, extra, uh, 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 could be added to the fluid or it could be extracted from the fluid because uh, if it is uh, energy is added it would be a centrifugal type pump or if it would be uh, energy is extracted it would be called as uh, turbine so there are so many examples like uh, axial flow compressors so fluid comes in and you have a rotor and you have a fixed blade passage so fluid enters and energy is transmitted to the fluid so high pressure fluid goes out uh, uh, from the other side and since the direction of the flow is parallel to the direction of the axis of the rotation so we call it an axial flow devices we will uh, talk about later too so centrifugal pump is uh, a, a another device which is a turbo machine which uh, involves the rotor and uh, uh, the energy interaction takes place and uh, uh, this is an impeller uh, 
and we will talk about impeller later uh, and this is another type of turbine called propeller turbine so you have a, 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 a rotor which is like a fan type stuff and uh, the gates are open then the fluid comes in and tra uh, transfers energy to this uh, shaft so that shaft rotates and you get a mechanical work and then this mechanical work by means of generator converted into electrical so uh, there is another device which interacts in such a manner that uh, there is a fluid jet strikes to the blade passage and uh, uh, this is called as a pelt and wheel so it rotates uh, there are bucket of water here and uh, uh, so the kinetic energy of the fluid is directly converted into shaft work or you could have steam turbines or you could have uh, gas turbines uh, so in steam turbines as you know you have high pressure high temperature steam goes to the uh, uh, rotor and uh, then uh, it imparts uh, it extracts energy high pressure high temperature fluid extracts energy to the shaft and uh, the shape of that is a, a diverging section because uh, the fluid or steam or gas is actually expanding so it needs more volume that's why you have more space in this uh, um, uh, diverging section and uh, so, um, by means of that uh, fluid stream uh, we extract energy and we convert it into shaft work so sick machines are called as uh, turbo machines which involves rotor and uh, the dynamic action uh, with the fluid either it's a compressor or either uh, either it's a pump or turbine if it is a pump we are adding energy if it is a turbine then we are extracting energy uh, so these fluid machines uh, once we classify broadly as uh, pd positive displacement machines uh, and turbo machines so positive displacement machines could be uh, pump as well as could be turbines so a turbine means uh, extracting energy or it could be just uh, transferring energy from one medium of the fluid to another uh, uh, we will talk first about the devices which are adding energy to the fluid so it could be the reciprocating type pumps uh, it could be the compressors uh, uh, because these positive displacement machines could be screw type pumps are rotary type, gear type, vane type, lobe type, these are all rotary type but they are positive displacement machines and uh, it could be uh, different like uh, 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 crank driven or uh, swash plate is like an inclined plate so uh, I advise you to uh, look for each and every device uh, google all these devices then you will be able to see how uh, they used to work but in all cases what they're doing is uh, their energy interaction is in terms of that since energy is added to the fluid so uh, they would be considered as uh, broad category as pumps so, whereas if energy is extracted from the fluid just like uh, uh, piston uh, ic engines uh, uh, we get energy out of that fluid in a, uh, a static manner by means of the piston and the cylinder movement uh, 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 then we get power output so we call it here because uh, the shaft is in rotation so we call it a motor here or a motor effect actually so energy is actually extracted from the fluid okay there are some devices uh, which is like a hydraulic press so what actually you are doing is you are transferring energy to the fluid so that uh, energy interaction is not taking place but uh, fluid is used as a means of energy transfer so here fluid is not either adding energy uh, the device is not either adding energy or extracting energy but act as a neutral and uh, so uh, just like hydraulic ram jack press these are the devices which are neither adding energy nor extracting energy but uh, they are the work in this manner of uh, positive displacement machines by creating a volume of a chamber and there is an interaction between the fluid and uh, uh, the rotating ele uh, moving element it could be either reciprocating or it could be either uh, rotary uh, so such machines are called as uh, PDMs and then we have rotodynamic machines so the classification is either as energy is added 
or energy is extracted so if energy is extracted then it would be called as turbines uh, and one of the broad classification is uh, either impulse turbines and the radiation turbine and uh, there are different names uh, depending upon the direction of the flow called Kaplan, Francis, uh, the, uh, we will go into the detail later uh, in different uh, later lectures and this is something like energy added to the fluid and this energy added to the fluid is uh, due to this rotodynamic action so centrifugal compressors uh, uh, fans uh, and uh, 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 rotary type uh, pumps uh, that uh, that you, uh, that usually we use in uh, uh, lifting water from an underground tank to an overhead tank and uh, as you know the pdm type ic engine type or piston cylinder type pumps we use uh, adding energy to the fluid uh, what we call it a donkey pumps uh, for suction for su uh, sucking water from the line so such pumps are uh, the uh, uh, which are used as donkey pumps they are actually positive displacement machines whereas uh, rotary type pumps uh, which are single stage multi-stage so they are actually rotary type they work on a rotodynamic action but uh, you are adding energy to the fluid so that uh, the fluids the flow rate or fluid pressure increases so uh, uh, and the classification it could be one possible classification is uh, whether your rotary a part is having a casing or shroud or whether it is unshrouded or uncased uh, the another class of device which is called top converters and hydraulic couplings uh, they are actually just like an intermediate devices which uh, doesn't uh, interact in terms of energy whether adding or subtracting but they are not neither adding nor subtracting but transfer powers from one shaft to another so top converters are present in uh, uh, modern day uh, automatic transmissions uh, uh, in transaxles where you have automatic gears so where top converter is used so which is actually simply just the uh, sort of uh, coupling which uh, uh, uses transfers energy in in a manner that uh, it is not uh, uh, imparting energy or extracting energy or adding energy but uh, actually just transfer the power from one shaft to another so uh, fluid is used as a medium so uh, that's why you have a smooth power transmissions uh, whereas uh, these are the devices reactions and impulse turbine we will uh, talk quite in detail later okay so uh, tra uh, tra turbo machines which are having a, a rotor and uh, which interacts with the moving stream it either could be uh, energy consuming or what you call it a power absorbing then we classify the, uh, them as pumps or it could be the water uh, energy producing then we call a turbine so depending upon the direction of the flow and we will learn later what is uh, meant by axial flow axial flow means uh, uh, the axis of the rotation and the fluid is parallel whereas in radial flow axis of rotation and uh, fluids are perpendicular so such machines are called radial machines and we will define these two classifications later too um, one last thing which probably these propellers uh, these propellers are also energy consuming devices so if you see in the old uh, propeller type uh, uh, aircrafts so there is a engine or a motor uh, that runs this uh, propeller so this propeller is actually trans uh, uh, transferring energy from the shaft to the fluid in such a manner that you have a thrust and that thrust is uh, propelling the aircraft in the forward direction so that's why such aircrafts are called the uh, uh, propeller type aircrafts so the action to these uh, 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 propellers is like they have a shaft and they have blades uh, and obviously there is a rotation of the blade so there is a tangential velocity associated depends upon the r and the angular speed omega to that blade so that uh, there is a tangential force and uh, there is a force perpendicular to the tangential force 
so that is actually the velocity of advance or where the uh, aircraft is uh, uh, actually uh, propelling so or the thrust is generated in that direction so you have uh, so the part of the blade act as an aerofoil and uh, uh, you have uh, tangential forces uh, due to the motion of the blade uh, and uh, there is a velocity in the perpendicular direction which is responsible for the thrust and if you look at the angle of uh, different angles blade angles so these blade angles uh, produces a different amount of lift and drag on those uh, blade elements so that is responsible for i mean if you changes these ang uh, uh, designs then uh, we will be able to change the magnitude of the thrust or the drag force on it so uh, they are also power consuming devices uh, which is uh, having a fluid and uh, they are imparting energy to the fluid so that you have a thrust force develop which propels the aircraft in the forward direction okay uh, if we look at the performance of uh, the two different types of uh, machines like uh, we are not uh, right now considering machines we are just talking about pumps whether it is a positive displacement pump or whether it is a rotodynamic pump so this is a typical characteristic of a rotodynamic pump so on the horizontal axis we have a flow rate which is a discharge so as there is a zero discharge as you increases the flow rate increases or on the y axis you have a pressure rise or a head increase so uh, for example for dynamic or rotodynamic type pumps uh, if your uh, fluid viscosity is low uh, you have such a behavior as you increases the flow rate uh, so initially there is uh, zero flow rate zero flow rate means your discharge valve is closed so you develop certain head or certain pressure so that head is called as suction head so as the flow rate you start opening the discharge valve so the flow rate increases so as flow rate increases the pressure decreases and at some flow rate it decreases very sharply so this is a typical uh, uh, pressure or head versus flow rate curve for a rotodynamic type pumps obviously uh, your head would be changing if you have a more viscous fluid so uh, your shaft is not going to generate that uh, uh, flow rate or that head which is uh, required or because these both parameters are required in uh, pumps so the, this is the performance uh, parameters of uh, a rotodynamic pump whereas uh, the uh, performance of a positive displacement pump is not affected by the flow rate so they usually work on a constant flow rate and uh, you can uh, once you impart fluid to these positive displacement pumps uh, you can increase their pressure or uh, the head associated can be increased so um, from your fm1 knowledge you know uh, pressure head uh, you have kind of velocity head you have potential head so pressure can be converted in terms of a head as well or in terms of a pressure rise whatever it is so uh, uh, this is a typical performance for this uh, pdps positive displacement pumps uh, so the performance uh, in terms of pressure rise versus flow rate uh, uh, it doesn't change much even for uh, low viscous fluid or high viscous fluid so if you have uh, it doesn't make any difference but in rotodynamic pump are more sensitive to the viscosity of the fluid okay so if we compare the performance of the positive displacement pumps and rotodynamic pumps is uh, first of all positive displacement machines uh, impart energy to the fluid so that they can raise very high pressure so you can go up to 300 atmospheric pressures whereas rotodynamic pumps are not meant for very high pressures so they are working on moderate pressure rise uh, uh, whereas since uh, these positive displacement works uh, in an intermittent manner so their discharge is pulsating whereas the rotodynamic discharge is steady so consequently the flow rate for, for they can generate very high uh, pressures but less flow rate 
whereas rotodynamic pumps can generate higher gallons per minute so higher flow rate uh, as we have seen the positive displacement pumps are steady in a design in a sense that whether viscosity is low or high their pressure rise doesn't change whereas rotodynamic pumps are very sensitive to the viscosity of the uh, fluid so if your viscosity of the fluid as you know the temperature changes viscosity changes so it means uh, if the temperature changes the performance of the rotodynamic pump also changes uh, uh, there is one more feature because uh, if air is trapped uh, between the lines of, or between the blade passages or the rotating or the uh, uh, reciprocating elements uh, whatever it is in the pumps so uh, uh, you need constant flow rates uh, 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 you need water to be provided or uh, working fluid whatever uh, fluid is being uh, uh, pressure to be increased you need to provide that this is called priming actually these should be the two different aspects so uh, in rotodynamic pumps uh, if uh, the air gap has settled then you need uh, uh, to provide remove the air gap in order to run those pumps so that is actually called as priming even in the older type of donkey pumps you need to, there is a hole on the nut on the top and when you open it and then you put water so that whatever if there is an air gap there that should be removed and this process is called priming so in modern day design even in the rotodynamic pump uh, there are the designs are such that uh, they are called self primed so, but in olden times, uh, people uh, need to prime. Uh, uh, priming was the feature. Uh, since positive displacement machines can generate very immense pressure at a given flow rate, so uh, the flow rate is nearly constant in the positive displacement machines. Now. Uh, uh, since uh, this can generate very high pressure, so their cost is much higher, uh, whereas uh, uh, the rotodynamic pumps are economical and uh, so there is always some pros and cons associated with whether a positive displacement pump or a rotodynamic pump uh, there is a cl classification actually general uh, parts associated with uh, a turbo pump uh, when i call turbo pumps i mean a uh, rotodynamic type pump so uh, it means uh, the the fluid uh, enters at the center of an eye of an impeller so this is the blade passage which is uh, having the blade and a hub that is connected to the shaft so once the shaft is connected to a motor it is rotating so fluid is coming to the eye and then fluid moves into the radial direction and due to that ro uh, uh, rotodynamic action energy is imparted to the fluid uh, so fluid enters from the center and leaves at the uh, outer blade passage and then you have uh, uh, such a volute section which further increases the pressure and high pressure goes from the discharge side so that uh, that passage is called the volute passage and uh, the casing of this is actually there is this is an impeller which is actually a rotating part having a blade and a hub connected to the shaft and uh, the, the casing is uh, uh, this casing which is actually the shroud or casing whatever you call shroud is for impeller and casing is for the whole pump body and uh, this is an eye of an impeller where the fluid is entering and once it enters uh, it is uh, parallel to the axis of rotation but uh, the uh, shape of the blade is such that uh, it goes in the radial direction and uh, the fluid enters perpendicular to what it enters so this is a typical uh, uh, main parts like uh, housing or casing which is actually this uh, body of the pump which you see from outside and uh, there is a shaft there is a hub and there are blades so hub and blades together formed an impeller 
and this impeller is being rotated by means of a shaft and uh, the volute shape is uh, this sort of a diffuser shape is uh, given here so that further pressure can be increased as uh, fluid goes out of that uh, blade passage. Uh, impeller, I told you that impeller having a rotating part, all turbo machines have a rotating part called impeller which is nothing a supporting disc which is a hub and blade attached to it and uh, obviously the uh, fluid flows through that impeller. So it could be the impeller could be just like your home fan having a shaft and a hub and blades are attached to the hub. So that would be an example of an open impeller or it could be a semi open impeller. So you have a blade passage uh, which is connected to a disc here and that disc is connected to a hub and hub is connected to the shaft. So we call it a semi open impeller or it could be a completely enclosed impeller on either side. It is only semi open means one side is open and one side is closed. So the front side is open and the other side is closed. Here both sides are closed that is usually happens in blower. The blower impellers looks like this. Uh, turbo machines as I told you that uh, uh, the one of the classification is either in terms of the this is the axis of rotation and the flow is parallel to the axis of rotation such machines are called as axial flow machines. So uh, or if this is the uh, axis of rotation and fluid is uh, following parallel to the axis of rotation or we can say if there is a bl uh, blade and the flow and blade are orthogonal perpendicular to each other so either way you remember the easy is that the direction of the flow when it enters to the blade passage is parallel to the axis of rotation whereas the radial flow machines are such that once the flow enters uh, then uh, the shape of the blade is such that the flow moves in the radial direction so here the flow is uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation such machines are called as uh, uh, radial flow machines and centrifugal pump is an example of the radial flow machine. So in reality sometimes your blade passage is such that it is neither axial nor radial. So we call it a mixed flow machine which is partially axial and partially radial. Uh, the impellers, uh, this is a picture for a centrifugal impeller without any shroud, uh, unshrouded. So you have uh, uh, a blade passage uh, and hub and uh, the blades are, blade passage is connected with the hub and hub is connected with the shaft. So, uh, or you could have an impeller which is covered which is shrouded so fluid flows between that blade passage so the two blades uh, forms a space and fluid flows between the two, uh, blade passage or it could be a mixed flow impeller shape looks like this uh, where you have uh, partially the fluid uh, blade angles are such that uh, uh, is an, a neither uh, axial nor radial so we call it a mixed flow impeller Okay, at this point uh, uh, we have uh, uh, defined pump as a device which uh, uh, so the pumps, compressors, fan blowers are all work consuming devices. So but what is the difference? The difference here is uh, uh, that uh, depending upon the volume flow rate, pressure and phase. Uh, what you call it, we, what we usually call it pump uh, uh, dynamic type. So where we use liquid, we cannot pump air or gas. So that is actually called as uh, pumps. So if your working fluid is uh, gas, then that would be called as compressors. And uh, compressors are supposed to be the devices which are dealing with very high pressures but low volume flow rate. Uh, whereas uh, pump is dealing with uh, high volume flow rate and uh, uh, medium pressures. Uh, fans are increasing the flow rate but the, but the pressure difference across the fan is not, not that much. So uh, the pressure is low but the volume flow rate is high. 
whereas blower is having a moderate uh, volume flow rate as well as uh, uh, moderate uh, pressure and the fluid is in the gaseous phase so this is the uh, difference between pump compressor fan and blower uh, these uh, turbo machines according to one of the uh, researcher turbo machines represents a dollar 400 billion market or it could be more than that as the worldwide growth is uh, increasing over the period of time and uh, in in uh, united states uh, uh, only the centrifuge industrial centrifugal pumps consume 5% of the, all the energy that is produced in usa so it is uh, one of the uh, uh, major energy consuming devices uh, that is being operated in us consumes 5% of their total energy that they produced. Uh, in addition, nowadays, uh, 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 there is a requirement of uh, uh, sustainable energy and the green energy or green power. So people need to spend money on this turbo machine, you know, their research and development and uh, industry. Uh, and obviously, as engineer, we are interested in uh, improving the design, improving its construction. And as engineer, most of the time, you are required to select the a turbo machine or pump, or and you have to look into the applications of these uh, uh, fluid machines. So uh, still, there is a lot of opportunities. Uh, and uh, uh, whatever efforts you pay uh, that is uh, all required as engineer in industry okay at this point i close uh, i uh, stop the lecture to today's lecture